This is the standard method used for the transfer of fuel from a tanker fitted with a large derrick to a warship. The rig is adapted to be used with a standard 70-foot merchant ship's derrick fitted with a running topping lift, but the whip or runner is replaced by trough whips. The derrick is usually rigged at an angle of 45 degrees. The hose is carried in three troughs, each suspended from the derrick by its own whip or by a tackle. The first trough is hoisted by a tackle to about 10 feet from the deck and secured. The whip for the second or inner trough is led through a sheave at the lower end of the derrick head and then through a block at the heel of the derrick to a winch. The whip of the third or outer trough is led through a higher block at the derrick head, then through a block at the heel of the derrick to another winch. Lastly, a recovery line is secured near the hose end, led through a block at the extreme head of the derrick, and then through a leading block at the heel of the derrick to a winch. This recovery line is only required when engaging or disengaging and during fueling is kept slack, the end of the hose being hung in the receiving ship on a pennant. Any variation in the distance between the two ships is counted by the winch drivers tending the outer and sometimes the inner trough whips. So as either to give additional span or keep the hose clear of the water as the case may be. The gear is assembled and rigged in good time before establishing contact. Canvas gaiters or matting are used on the hose to prevent chafing where it passes through the troughs. The hose line by which the hose is hauled into the receiving ship is shackled to the inner end of the last length of hose which is 15 feet long and secured by toggle lashings or spring hooks. The outer end of the hose, on which is the male part of the self-sealing coupling, is lashed to the hose line, which is then flaked down on deck. The coupling must be well parceled for protection. Before establishing contact, the derrick is unhoused and lowered to its working position. The hose end rig is handed outboard and hoisted by the recovery line. The outer trough is handed outboard and hoisted. Then the inner trough. Lastly, the third trough is hoisted by a tackle to about 10 feet above the spar deck and left standing. In the receiving ship, the female part of the self-sealing coupling is secured to the deck fueling connection. A hose hanging pennant is shackled to a slip above the reception point and a block to take the hose line is provided in the vicinity of the pennant. Guardrails are lowered at the reception point and shot mats are provided. A flag of the appropriate colour indicates the receiving point and the liquid to be passed. 
To pass the gear, the gun line is fired from the supplying ship. In the receiving ship, the gun line is hauled in and the messenger comes to hand. As soon as the hose line comes to hand, it is unclipped from the messenger, rove through its leading block, and taken to the windlass or a winch, and hauled in. The outer length of the hose with the male unit of the self-sealing coupling is thus hauled into the receiving ship until the pennant in the receiving ship can be hooked to the ring of the pennant on the hose. The outer length of the hose is then cast off from the hose line and the hose end is taken to the fueling point. It is most important to avoid chafe, so two light tackles are rigged on the hose to prevent it sawing fore and aft in response to the ship's movements during fueling. Connection is made by fitting the male unit of the self-sealing coupling to the female unit. Fueling can now begin. Other liquids may be transferred in separate hoses during the main fueling operation. While being fueled, it is essential that the receiving ship's fueling system is operated systematically to preserve the trim of the ship, ensure there are no delays, no overflowing of tanks, and to reduce any back pressure in the pipelines to a minimum. Here is a typical example of the sequence of operations in a light cruiser. Fuel is first admitted to the main pipeline. The tanks are then filled in groups of six. As each group nears completion, its filling rate is slowed down while the next group is opened up. Here is the first group. Then the second group. And finally, the third group. On completion, the hoses are cleared of fuel by blowing them through with compressed air. During the whole operation, the winch drivers in the supplying ship must tend the trough whips and perhaps even the running topping lift as the distance between the ships varies. In the closing stages of fueling, the receiving ship passes back the outer end of the hose line to the supplying ship on the messenger. In the receiving ship, when fueling is completed, the self-sealing coupling is disconnected. Then the hose line is secured to the last length of the hose in the same manner as it was received. This must be done correctly or delay may be caused to a subsequent fueling operation. The light securing tackles are now cast off and the weight of the hose is taken on the hose line. The hose hanging pennant is unhooked and the hose is paid out on the hose line while its weight is taken on the recovery line in the supplying ship. Then the hose line is unsnatched from the leading block and its bite paid back to the supplying ship.
In the supplying ship, the inner and outer troughs are triced close up by their whips. The hose end is hoisted to the derrick head by the recovery line, and the rig should now be ready to pass to the next ship to fuel. This rig is an adaptation of the large derrick rig for transferring fuel from a warship or an auxiliary only fitted with a small derrick to another warship. The rig shown here is the crane rig of a cruiser. To assemble the rig, the necessary lengths of hose are laid out on the supplying ship's deck and connected up. The hose is slung by two troughs only where it is protected by canvas gaiters or matting. The hose line is shackled to the inner coupling of the end 15 foot length of hose. This outer length of hose is then clipped to the hose line and its end lashed in place. The male part of the self-sealing coupling is not shown here. The recovery line, which is rove through a sheave at the head of the crane jib, is now shackled to the clamp of the hose end rig. The inner end of the hose is coupled to the deck connection and all standard precautions are taken against fire. To hoist the hose into its working position, the outer end is first triced up by the recovery line. The outer trough is then hoisted by the crane purchase. Lastly, the inner trough is hoisted on a tackle, led from the heel of the jib. Immediately before replenishment, the crane is trained outboard. The hose is passed in the usual manner. During replenishment, any sideways strain on the jib of the crane must be avoided and the crane must therefore be kept trained in line with the hose. Disengaging and the recovery of this rig is the same as with the large derrick method. Jack stay fueling is an experimental method developed to allow ships to be fueled in heavy weather at a greater distance apart than the large derrick allows. The hose is supported in four troughs, each slung from a traveller running on a jack stay, and from each traveller a whip leads through swivel blocks at the king post head, thence through leading blocks on deck to a winch. An outhaul is shackled to the traveller of the outer trough and the hose is hung on a pennant in the receiving ship. The gun line, messenger, distance and telephone lines are passed to the receiving ship and the jack stay line is clipped to the messenger and hauled across. The messenger is kept rove between the two ships and is not shown here for the sake of clarity. When in hand in the receiving ship, the jack stay line is snatched into the leading blocks and hauled in until the end rig of the jack stay line comes to hand. Here is a close up of the end rig. First, a short pennant with a link in its end is stopped to the jack stay line. The other end of this pennant and the end of the jack stay line are shackled to two of the eyes of a monkey face union plate, to the other eye of which is shackled the outer end of the jack stay.
Also, the outer end of the out hole is stopped to the monkey face in a coil of sufficient length to allow it to be snatched into its leading blocks. The jack stay line is hauled in until the jack stay can be secured to the hanging pennant of the receiving ship. The out hole is then snatched into the jack stay line leading blocks and hauled in. The outer trough, with the end of the hose clipped to the out hole, is hauled across and the other troughs follow. As soon as the hose comes to hand, it is unclipped from the out hole. A second pennant is hooked into the ring at the end of the out hole, thus securing the outer trough in position. The hose is then connected up. During fueling, the supplying ship tends the jack stay with a winch, preferably of the self-tensioning type, and the trough whips with ordinary winches. Just before disengaging, the receiving ship closes with the supplying ship and passes back the end of the outhaul on the messenger. To disengage, the hose is uncoupled and its end clipped to the outhaul in the same manner as it was received. The outhaul is hove in a little, and the receiving ship's outhaul pennant is unhooked. The outhaul is then unsnatched from its blocks, and the jack stay line is snatched into them. The hose is recovered by the supplying ship hauling in the travellers, while the outhaul is paid back by the receiving ship. The jack stay is hove in a little so that the jack stay pennant can be unhooked. The jack stay is recovered by the supplying ship and paid back on the jack stay line from the receiving ship. The messenger is paid back. and finally cast off.